They said real fast on this meeting. Oh, they do indeed. They don't get anybody in high school this year except my son who's a teacher. These are, these are his students now. He took Mr. Yeah, that's right. He was there before, but now he switched his head of the department. He's teaching Mr. Hurley. This regular meeting of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen for August 19th, 2014 will come to order. I'll ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let me say to start with that we appreciate everyone's attendance. Uh, we have a large number of students from the government classes at uh, Springfield High. Uh, <coughs> previously, that, uh, those classes were taught by Mr. Hurd for many, many years. This year, they've been taken over by Mr. Carneal, a Patrick Carneal. And uh, I happen to know that gentleman because he's my son. <laughs> and uh, he and I had a conversation about 45 minutes ago uh, so I can let the students know that I'm going to try to get you out as quickly as I can. <laughs> and if you haven't gotten your uh, the sheet signed that you have to have signed to take back to class, we'll make sure that we have a point in this meeting that you can, that you can do that. Now I'm going to make a suggestion as far as the order of our agenda tonight that might expedite things a little bit. I know we've got uh, a few people at least from the Senior Citizen Center who don't want to be here all night, nor do I, but I do get a check for it and you all don't, so we want to try to be fair. This agenda, as you look down it, uh, when you look at the legislative portion of the agenda, the first eight items are all uh, first readings, which requires that they be read in their entirety. That takes a long time. So what I'm going to do, unless there's an objection, is put those eight items at the last of the agenda, just ahead of, just ahead of the consent docket, and we can move this through a lot closer because not too many of you want to hear what we're going to do on first reading. I uh, think that'll expedite things, so if there's no objection, we'll do that, and I think that will more nearly fit the needs of those who are in the audience. All right, the uh, item 1.2 now would be to approve the minutes of the meetings held on June 17th and July 15th. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? If you would favor the approval of the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carried. Now we'll move down the agenda to item 2.9. When I looked at this agenda earlier, I counted 32 or 33 items that would have to be voted on tonight, and that's when I decided we needed to do a little, little bit of streamlining. Okay, 2.9 is to discuss and possibly act on resolution 14-17. This would authorize the execution of a water <coughs> purchase contract between the city of Springfield, Tennessee, and the Logan County, Todd County Regional Water Commission. Is there a motion this so be considered? Moved. And second. a second. We've been talking about this item now off and on for actively since February of this year and really going back a year or two prior to that. So uh, we're looking forward to this being discussed. Paul, do you want to outline this <coughs> issue, please, for us? Uh, yes, I do, Mayor. Uh, it's a fairly uh, concise agreement. A uh, couple of things I wanted to bring up that aren't really directly uh, involved in contract wording, but things that we have to think about. The contract is based on a 20-inch main, which is uh, 2 million gallons minimum, which we'll pay for, and 6 million maximum. Right now, the uh, 
the estimated ballpark figure on the wholesale rate is three dollars and twenty nine cents per thousand that means for two million gallons a day uh, you're going to be paying annually two million four hundred one thousand seven hundred dollars for water just like we pay electric and gas we are purchasing a commodity um, now the issue that, that can be resolved later on by amending the contract if you so desire is you can build a 24 inch main and get about 44 percent more capacity which would allow us ultimately to not take six million gallons but to take 10 million gallons so right now the way the contract stands we've got our 10 at red river we've got our six maximum uh through logan todd for 16 but that could become 20 if we decide to do 10 but that's something we don't have to decide tonight also the contract uh says that uh, uh well says that we will be responsible for securing the right-of-way and uh, wasn't quite sure whether that was going to be included in the contract price or not but no we are responsible for paying that separately it's not involved uh, in the bond issue and will not be involved in the price of the cost of the water so right now we really don't have an idea what that right-of-way is going to be and I don't think we've got the route lane to, uh, le laid out just yet <clears throat> in the resolution for the bonds tonight we've got some extra money in there for water right-of-way if we need to uh, and if we don't know enough by the time we have to issue the bonds then we'll go to TML or go some other way of issuing that but that's going to be standalone debt for us and that was something that uh, uh, we just learned we were going to have to do so uh, I recommend uh, the approval of contract uh, if you want I think in the next several weeks or a month or so to upgrade that I think people from Logan Todd are here I think they're amenable to possibly amending the contract and going with a bigger bigger water line either way the right away we get will work in in either case okay for the benefit of the audience I think a lot of you are familiar with what we are discussing but you may uh, but some may not be uh, this is a long-term uh, plan of ours to increase the capacity that we have for uh, water as <coughs> some of you may know we currently get our water from Red River uh, just about out at the Kentucky state line the maximum capacity that we have from that source Roger is how many is it 8 million, million. okay 10 million gallons is the maximum we can get out of that that's with everything working right we average how what's the draw on the average year right? okay so you may ask well why are you going to another source if your average is five point something and yet you I have a capacity of 10 that's because everything's not always perfect and uh, you go through a series of droughts that type of thing or you go through an incident like we had uh, in February where uh, our the source was contaminated and for a little while nothing that we could do would straighten it out fortunately it got corrected after uh, 12 to 16 hours and we were able to continue without a crisis being uh, uh, in our face to, to deal with but what this will do Logan Todd has a treatment <coughs> plant in Guthrie Kentucky and they pump water from the middle of Clarksville right where the old railroad bridge is on the Cumberland River right down the railroad from Clarksville all the way to Guthrie which is 15 miles and they serve all of Logan County and all of Todd County plus Oak Grove Kentucky uh, from that uh, source they have excess capacity they have been talking to us off and on uh, probably at least two years uh, as a possible link to put us together and for us to be able to benefit from the capacity that they built and it would be a more workable arrangement for them financially obviously and it keeps us from having to go to, to a greater expense to build a second treatment plant somewhere on the Cumberland because the only other source we have to go to is the Cumberland and we don't want to have to do that ourselves so from Guthrie we would what this is this contract includes is laying a line essentially along US 41 from uh, Guthrie all the way into Springfield distance of 18 to 20 miles 
and link up with our system there. So that's what we're talking about. And we have to agree to take a minimum amount of water from that new source because you can't just build it and only turn it on one day when you decide you're in a crisis. You have to keep water flowing through it in order to maintain the uh, purification, et cetera, with that. So we would be agreeing to take, is it two million? A minimum of two million gallons a day to supplement what we need. And, uh, but we could move that up in the event that our treatment plant on Red River was shut down. So that's essentially what we're doing. This would take our capacity way on up there and ensure that we could still, that we could accommodate the growth that this town is, is I think, ready to, uh, to get. All you've got to do is look at the growth of Nashville itself and the counties that have taken off dramatically, which is Williamson, Rutherford, Wilson, and Sumner, leaving uh, Robertson, Cheatham, and Dixon as the ones with slower growth. And we don't want growth to overwhelm us. We don't want that to dictate what we do, but we want to be prepared for it in the event that it will occur, and we know that it will. We just don't know exactly when. So this seems to be a prudent way to uh, move this issue forward. All right, uh, any questions or comments now on the contract that's before you? I'm for it 100 percent. To sort of not sound redundant, but really and truly, as we as we move forward, we know water is a key source. So I feel it's a good deal. I think it's time for us to move forward. Ms. Snyder. This is our first step in making our town and our city grow. So we need to move forward tonight. All right. Oh, I agree. <clears throat> Bruce, have we looked at what this would do to the rates? Our water rates blending this in to what we're doing well it's uh, right now uh, our budget for water is about uh, six and a half million dollars maybe approaching seven million dollars uh, we will have to spend two million four hundred and one thousand seven hundred dollars at least if we use more than that we'll have to pay for that um, no, I haven't really done the math on that. We have 12,250 customers, so the rates are definitely going to go up uh, as soon as we start taking the water and the project's completed uh, probably in the next couple of years. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, we'll save a little money in the fact that uh, we won't be producing as much Red River water, but the fact is uh, we have when we sell wholesale water, we have to include our debt service when we cut back, we're only cutting back on the 56 cents per thousand that it costs to produce the water. So there'll be about 11, uh, per day we'll be at it, we'll have to pay $6,580 minus about $1,100 that we were producing at the, uh, at the, at the existing plant. Uh, and then they'll have to be spread among 12,250 customers. We're going to take delivery of this water where? Uh, you'll be taking delivery of the water uh, right through our system. Right, more or less at the city limits of Springfield. It comes to us. Water will be delivered from about this, our five million gallon storage tank up about this. And the debt that is incurred for this uh, is incurred and t taken care of by the uh, Logan Todd Water District, where they get the revenue to help do it is from the two million gallons that we are required to pay for as a minimum uh, daily. So that's how we're paying for it. We do not incur any debt. The only thing that we're going to have as an extra expense is the is to pay for right of ways because it has not been their practice to do that. And we don't. We have any idea what right of ways might cost? No. no, I would expect several million dollars. Now there is going to be some road right away available. I think all the way to Cedar Hill. Uh, they're going to try to get a route that uh, will use existing road right of ways and uh, rural land, but that hasn't been finalized. I think we need to know. <clears throat> what potentially this could do the rates, assuming that we use two million <coughs> gallons of, of Logan Todd water 
and reduce our uh, output at the plant down to three million, I'd like to know what that would do to rates before we vote. Clay? No comment. Jerome? I'm in favor of it. Okay. Uh, Roger, can you estimate at all how much you really think if Let's say you are producing six million and you cut it back to four million because you're buying this next two million from Logan Todd. How much of an impact dollar wise in a ballpark figure would you say that would I, I don't you could not estimate that? I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> well, we know what the cost of the contract is. It's some it's three dollars whatever uh, yeah. was quoted uh, for thousand gallons so we know that and uh, we didn't think it was prudent we've decided that it was this was the most cost-effective way we could approach the issue because it's not going to be cheap any way you go <clears throat> but uh, but we don't have that figure exactly of how much we would save from that from reducing our production as you as you acquire this new water well I'm for this I just think it would be smart on our part if we knew what that was going to be so we're not surprised well, uh, I think in, in doing a rough order of magnitude, just per month, 12,250 customers average, you know, weighting everybody the same, industry and everything, it was like 150 to $160 a year, something on that order. Per customer? Average per customer. Per customer. So, I mean, you're going you're gonna to have to see in the water rates, I can say this, you're probably, you're, these are fixed costs, so just like the sewer fixed costs went up, the water fixed costs are going to have to go up at some point. Because there's debt service involved with this. It has to be paid. All right. Any other comment? Yes, Mayor. I, I yes. did thank the question for Mr. Lee Masters. Uh, Mr. Lee Masters, has, is there any chance of a uh, possibility of if the chemicals that we buy if since we're in some kind of partnership, is there a, a bulk rate or quantity discount potential since we are somewhat entering into a partnership with a, another water system to, to get our supplies to treat the waters? Would there be any savings there? If we're going to produce, let's say we produce an average of 5 million gallons a day, we will drop that down to 3 million gallons a day. We will still have basically the same personnel cost because we have to have eight operators, some of their 24 hours a day, so the personnel cost won't change. Our utility cost will probably go down some because we will not have to pump as much, use as much electricity. Our chemical cost will go down because it will be proportional to the amount of water we treat. But, uh would there be any advantage to uh, trying to buy chemicals in bulk through <coughs> the partnership rather than each entity working out their own contracts and, and getting it from different suppliers? Logan Todd uses a different treatment process. They have membrane filters. We have rapid sand filters. So it's, it's really two different processes. Okay. Oh, that's, oh. Yeah. We're, we're buying finished water from them. That is correct. And we're producing our own water. <coughs> All right, anything else? All right. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Snead. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Pass 70. All right. Now, related to this issue is resolution 14-18. This resolution requests, the city, requests that the City of Springfield become a voting member of the Logan Todd Regional Water Commission and is granted the authority to appoint a commissioner to the Board of Commissioners of the Logan Todd Regional Water Commission. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Paul? Mayor, we won't be appointing anybody. We're asking the uh, judge executive to allow us to have a membership and then I believe that, uh, I believe you make the appointment, or somebody, either okay. the board or you make the appointment. All right, we'll do so in appropriate time. Any further discussion of this? Second. Yes, sir. Call the roll, please. Head. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Ellis. Aye. 
Snead. Aye. Pass seven to zero. All right, now resolution 14-19, that's your item 2.11. This uh, would declare certain city property no longer being used as surplus and authorizing the disposal of such property. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Correct. We got a second and a third. Yeah. Uh, any discussion? <laughs> Call the roll, please. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Snead. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Mason. Aye. Head. Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Okay, now 2.12. This is resolution 14-20. It authorizes the Springfield Electric System of the Spring City of Springfield to become a member of Seven States Power Corp uh, Corporation. Is there a motion this be considered? So moved. No. And a second. Uh, Mr. Gardner, you want to make us our electric director, you want to explain what this is, please, sir? <coughs> Yes, sir, Mayor. Uh, Seven States is a generation and transmission cooperative uh, founded by the Tennessee Valley Public Power Association, of which we're a member of. Uh, it's chartered in 2007 for the purpose of basically building equity ownership in the TVA transmission system. As you know, we pay a lot of money to TVA, but we don't have any equity ownership in any of the TVA facilities. And this was kind of a starting point in allowing distributors to actually own some assets of TVA in the Valley, help protect against uh, privatization if TVA were to, ever to privatize, trying to, the distributors have really been trying through TVPPA to push for more ownership of the facilities and more control over those assets to keep that from happening. But it also gives us the benefit of being able to enter into deals or projects through this generation and transmission cooperative, say, for instance, there was a uh, power plant that uh, TVA sold to seven states, the South Heaven power plant in Mississippi. And uh, through that, they were going to, the plan was to actually generate power and sell to other uh, neighboring power systems like Duke Energy. First time in the history that the actual power distributors in the Tennessee Valley have been able to have a part in the sale of electricity instead of just being through TV, TVA. So okay. just gives us more buying power and more leverage in the valley. And therefore, you recommend this? I highly recommend it, yes. All right. Any discussion now? Yes, question, Mayor. I have a question, question. question for Mr. Gardner. Mr. Gardner, we all have heard about the, the just unbelievable deficits TVA has acquired over nuclear plants not finished, uh, then it's revised, we're wanting to build some new ones. Uh, by the time they get them online, they're out of date. How does our induction in this co-op, how does that affect all of the past debts? How would that affect us? Well, it, it really doesn't affect our standing with TVA. Uh, TVA is a federal agency. That debt is on their books. Uh, this just gives us some leverage in the assets of TVA, but not the debt. So uh, the debt is something, uh, if TVA were to sold, were to be sold, which is very doubtful that could happen because of the massive amount of debt they do have. But if that were to happen, TVA were to be privatized, then those assets would go with whoever bought them. This just gives us the ability to have some say-so to, to control at least part of those assets to say we own them instead of the federal government. Are there other questions? All right. Hearing none, please call the roll. Carneal. Aye. Head. Yes. Sneed. No. Mason. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Pass six to one. Okay. Now we're moving to 2.13. This is action on resolution 14-21. <clears throat> authorizing the issuance of not to exceed 18,500,000 uh, in aggregate principal amount of general obligation bonds. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Paul, do you want to give a little <clears throat> description of this? Thank you, Mayor. This is an, an initial resolution that uh, we have to pass, and then there's a full resolution behind it. Um, we're actually uh, authorizing a little more money than, we, than we're probably going to need. Uh, we talked about uh, at previous meeting uh, the uh, 
projects that are going to be included in this bond issue are going to be $15 million <coughs> for the wastewater rehab, 200000 to extend sewer down Old Greenbrier Pike, a $1 million for the library, we've got the Greenway match, 350000 and the water plant uh, basin at about 750000 That's $17,300,000. Uh, I've got some money in there tentatively for right-of-way acquisition. Um, we should know a little more about that in the next month or so. So when we actually issue the bonds, we will issue no more than 18, 18 and a half million, and it may be actually less than that. Okay. Other discussion? And Mayor, I did, I did want to give everybody a, you know, I thought I remembered to bring this down here. Yeah, here's a. Uh, these bonds are 25 years, which normally we go 20, but uh, we've got some pretty costly items we have to pay for. Uh, first couple years, we were capitalizing interest. Uh, that means uh, no debt service will be due until approximately principal due June 1st of 2016. So that's, this will give us an opportunity, because most of this money is for the sewer bonds. This will allow us to pay off uh, some money on existing sewer debt before adding the additional bonds and having to go through the right process again. Okay. Are there other questions? Please call the roll. Hubbard. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Snead. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Past 7 to 0. Now we move to 2.14. This is another resolution authorizing the issuance, sale, etc., of this uh, bond issue. Motion, please. So moved. Second, second item. Second. Any further discussion on this? Call the roll. Mason. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Head. Yes. Snyder. Aye. Pass seven to zero. All right, we move now into the administrative portion of the agenda. And the first item there, 3.1, is the monthly adjustment of retail electric rates of Springfield Electric due to the monthly fuel cost adjustment of TVA. Motion, please. So moved. And a second. Second. All right, Mr. Gardner, what's, what are you doing up or down this month? We're going down 3.8%. That's a good. good job. I understand you've got a pretty good uh, contest going with the gas department here to see which one of you can get lower. Is that it after I've been shining, y'all? <laughs> I think he can get lower than I can. You think he can? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll take the 3.8. Okay. Any discussion on that before we vote? Please call the roll. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Pass 7 to 0. All right. Uh, gas rates now. 3.2. Two, two. Mr. Riddle? You got me this month. Did uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much uh, you going down? We're, we're down 2.2%. All right. About 1.63% across the board. So. Well, just work at it a little more next month. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there a motion on the gas rates, please? I move. Second. All right, any discussion there? Please call the roll. Head. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Pass 7 to 0. Okay. Now, 3.3 is to discuss and possibly take action on a request for funding by the Robertson County Senior Center. Uh, we have a letter from uh, Ms. Patty Moore, board chair of the Senior Center requesting emergency funding for the Senior Center in the amount of $5,000. This was not included in our uh, budget. I think it's appropriate that I add a little comment here. I talked to Ms. Moore back probably a month to six weeks before, it seemed like it was about the time school was out, uh, about this issue because we had not had it present, the request presented to us but I was aware there was a need. Uh, Gene Beck is a member of that board. He had talked to me as well. 
and uh, I said, well, submit a request and we will see what we can do. So that's where we are. And I think you know from the publicity in the Times and uh, on the radio station here as well that uh, they have faced some pretty difficult times financially. And this is a valuable uh, program that goes on in a, on Locust Street and one that we uh, need to try to help out if it's at all possible. So uh, is there, the request is for $5,000 for this year. And uh, I would think then at the end of this year, if we see how things work out, that they might uh, present a request to us in the normal budget cycle, which you know starts much earlier than this time. But there's never been any attention, uh, intention on our part to deny anything, but the request simply had not come in. So uh, we want to want to make that clear. and. Uh, I appreciate their getting it to us, even though uh, really probably they didn't know we were in line or agreeable to, amenable to taking the request. Okay, uh, anybody want to make a motion on this? I want to make a motion, but I want to amend. You can do that. We got to get a motion. Oh, the motion put it on. Good. Second. The request is for 5,000. You've made a motion to consider the request. That's what we're doing. Next. We have a second. Now, Go ahead and talk now, Mr. Dove. I want to amend it to match what the county did, $10,000. And I, I really feel that uh, coming from a senior citizen myself, I really feel that, that we can All right, it. my next thing is going before I take another request. Mr. Nutty, <clears throat> tell us how we finish the fiscal year. We don't ever know until, the, until uh, we're a month or so into the new we had expected to be just under two million in reserves well we expected to spend over four hundred thousand dollars in reserves we only had to spend a hundred and forty three thousand right now it looks like so we are going to be uh, do much better than we had anticipated the board's policy is to have a uh, reserve fund of over two million of two million dollars and right now it'll stand a little under two point two million dollars think that's very appropriate if we're considering anything extra. All right, other questions about, uh, you, want, you want it to be 10 is what you're saying. I want it to be 10, I'll amend it to 10. Okay, well, you want to make a formal amendment or? I want to make a formal amendment that we. Uh, okay, let's, uh, the motion is, it, let me, let's see, let's simplify this as much as we can. Okay, the motion. The request we, is that we look at 5,000. That's the quest. If you want to come through with the maker of a motion on 10,000 and there's no objections from the, maker, from the maker of the motion to start with, let's just run it through on one vote. Well, I move that we give the Senior Citizen Center a total of $10,000. Who made the other part of the motion? I do. Are you agreeable to that? That's fine. Yes, no. All right. Now, discussion. I just wanted to say that, of course, first of all, I cannot vote on this. Uh, I serve on that board. I thought not, you were going to say I'm you not, weren't old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't go on it until He'll I saw, get me back I saw Gene back there, and I knew I couldn't be there. Be there. I, I put on your desk there, it, it titles Robs County Senior Center, and just some activities that they have there. And, and, and I know, uh, of course, their funds are being reduced like most federal funds are for these activities. But they really do, do need, and the $10,000 would be wonderful. Uh, and uh, I, I think it will help the center to be more successful. It's, uh, it has activities, it has flea, free flu shots, it has, and so you can go get your flu shot there. Uh, it has a number of activities and, and dealing with the health and activities for you, for people. And uh, I, I really I appreciate the $10,000 uh, recommendation. And I look, uh, I hope this board will approve that. And just as we do that, remember that uh, we, we gave you, we put $10,000, $20,000 into the YMCA last year for a program dealing with youth. Uh, we are going to vote on the running the bus to Nashville, and I'm not sure what, what that amount is yet. That comes up a little later. So I think this this request is very worthwhile, and I think it'll help a lot of people. Okay. 
I want to tag to this also. We, we must admit, this is our tax base. These are visionaries. They are the reason why we're doing what we're doing right now. And so, out of due respect, that's why I, I request that $10,000. All right, sir. Uh, Clay, did you have anything? Bruce? Willie? No. Okay. All right, if there's nothing further, uh, call the roll, please. Ellis? Pass. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Carneal? Aye. Mason? Aye. Head? Yes. Pass six to zero and one abstain. Okay. And thank you, seniors. You don't give me credit enough. All right, now as we move uh, other items, 3.4 to discuss and possibly take action on the proposed interlocal agreement between the EU 91 Emergency Communication District, Robertson County as an entity, the City of Springfield, and the City of White House. Uh, Chief, you're going to do that for us, please. And let's get a motion on the floor that that be considered. Come on. Second? Second. I'll second. Okay. Okay, I'll just uh, summarize briefly. I think everyone here is fairly aware of this. As of about a year ago, well, as of a number of years ago, we started consolidating our communication services, uh, but it never really became a true consolidation as far as how the funding was worked out on that. Uh, as you recall, about a year ago, we came back and said that we, were pay we felt like we were paying a disproportionate share of that and that the funding for the 911 communications center and all the emergency communications should be based on call volumes and that sort of thing. Uh, we sort of went our own direction for a while, but recognizing that the right thing to do for the citizens and for our communities was to consolidate that center. Uh, we put the pieces together. We used some outside consulting people. We put those pieces together. We came up with the percentages and the numbers. Uh, I don't think this would have happened had Paul not been such a champion of the cause, but obviously everyone here also participated in that. And the bottom line is it's the right thing to do. The county approved it last night unanimously. They recognize this is the right way to go and the right thing to do. It's going to save us considerable money. And by doing these things together in a consolidated fashion, we're able to reduce the total cost. We're, we're able to reduce the manpower, the staffing levels, and it's going to benefit everyone in Robertson County and Springfield. So I think you've got the numbers. The numbers are virtually identical to what we brought to you a year ago, virtually identical to what we looked at when we uh, had the outside consulting people with MTAS and CTAS, and uh, everybody seems to be on board, and we're ready to finalize this, approve it, and move on. It has your recommendation. Absolutely. All right. No. Is there a motion that this so agreement be signed? Second. All right. Any discussion there? Yes, the chief. This is something we worked on a long time. Mm -hmm. Can I ask Mr. Smith? Go ahead. Okay. Do you feel the spirit of Springfield is willing to be a equal partner and not a main barrier? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think that. Uh, we, we I think everyone has looked forward to this day. You know, some people say, "Well, Springfield might want might, might want to control something." Well, you know, chief, it's going to reduce your budget. Can reduce your staffing levels that's awesome it's somebody else's it's somebody else's program to run uh, we've got a very good director that we hired from the outside that came in mm -hmm. and I think that it's going to be uh, truly a shared consolidated communication center which is what it should have been uh, all along it just took us a while to get there so I think that the spirit is very good uh, with the director there. I know that the sheriff has been very supportive of it. I think everyone here has been very supportive of where we are today. It's just taken us a long time to get here. You said the key word, shared, okay? okay. okay. Thank you, sir. That's very good. All right, you have the proposal. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Carneal. Aye. Head. Yes. Snee. Aye. Mason. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. seven zero. <clears throat> All right, now, Chief, I'm glad you're still standing. Uh, the item coming up next is discuss and possibly take action on authorizing pay differentials for certain police 
officer assignments. Are you going to make a specific rep recommendation on that now, Mr. Pollard? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm prepared to do that if, uh, if you would like, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there a motion that we discuss this and possibly act on it? So moved. Second? Second. Now, Chief, if you'll go forward with that, please. Okay, let me just, uh, again, I'll try to uh, highlight this. There are certain uh, jobs in the police department where everybody's just a police officer. They're expected to do certain things. There are also some jobs that are, uh, uh, are special. They, uh, they require extra expertise, extra training, and frankly, extra work on the part of the individuals. Uh, at the present time, we don't really recognize some of those positions that are very specialized positions. When people uh, either volunteer or in some cases don't volunteer and are assigned those jobs, we're assigning them sometimes to, uh, to shift work that is, uh, is much more taxing than what the average police officer is working. We assign them to jobs that are more dangerous than the other police officers are involved in and things that require additional work. Uh, especially like in our FTO program. Uh, so what we are doing is we're identifying three areas that we feel like are, are those special areas where those people should be recognized and compensated for the additional responsibilities and the additional burdens that they bear. So the ones that we've specifically identified is field training officer. And a field training officer goes through a specific program, a certification program. When they do that, they train the new police officers. Every single day they do evaluations. They evaluation on every, evaluate new recruits on every single thing that they do. This is a 12-week program. It requires a lot more work, a lot more uh, energy and effort on the part of the field training officer. We're recommending a 5% differential. It's a 5% increase while they are training a new officer. It would only apply while they're training a new person. The second that we are identifying here for uh, some additional compensation are narcotics officers. In most departments, those are actually detective positions and they are promoted to detectives. We don't do that in Springfield. They are patrol positions. When somebody goes into narcotics, they work all times of the days and nights and weekends. Uh, they're involved in a whole lot of things out here that the average police officer doesn't do. They're involved in seizures and hazardous materials and uh, decontaminations and things like that the average officer doesn't do. Again, we're proposing here a 5% differential while somebody's assigned to narcotics. When they're no longer assigned to narcotics, they go back to the regular pay rate. And then the third of the, the uh, individuals that we are recommending are those for the crime suppression unit, what you've in the past called a bicycle unit. Uh, these folks are out there in the highest crime neighborhoods of the city on bicycles in the dark. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't think of a more dangerous position in the city, certainly in the police department, than, than to engage in this. And frankly, I think that they deserve some, some sort of recognition and compensation for the additional hazards and the additional work that they're doing. Not only is it physically taxing, but they're not allowed to work the same shifts as the other officers do. Uh, the other officers are off every other weekend. These guys are working virtually every weekend, every Friday and Saturday night. Uh, so I think that they deserve something additional. Again, we're talking about 5% differential for them. So when we put these together, and I do have some numbers I think that we came up with uh, for all of these, uh, I think that uh, what we estimated for the field training officers, those differentials would amount to a total of about $1,540 per year. That would be the total we would anticipate for field training officers. For narcotics, it would be about $4,147 a year. That's for two, two full-time narcotics officers. And for our crime suppression people, uh, let me make sure I got this right, uh, $8,321 a year. That is a maximum. If we had all five of those positions filled, I'll tell you right now, we have two of those positions filled. Uh, we're not going to spend that much money, but if you add those, that would be the maximum amount of money it would cost us for the year. <clears throat> now, we did put money in the budget this year. We asked for it uh, with the city manager. The funding is there to cover these, but we wanted to make sure that the elected officials were on board, understood what we wanted to do and why we wanted to do it. So um, 
this is to, to recognize people that go above and beyond what is normal for a police officer. We felt like they deserve something extra. So that's what this is about. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Yes, sir. Mr. Hubbard. Yes, sir. Chief, as a, a 30 year intimate veteran of the streets of Springfield, I, I support you wholeheartedly because I'm not talking off the top of my head. I know how dangerous it is, okay? I know what your officers are facing because really, being honest with you, I almost face it daily. I almost live in it daily. So I support you wholeheartedly. Thank you. Sounds like a very thorough proposal and uh, we appreciate all of the steps that you have outlined here. Paul, before we uh, you yeah, thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to let the board know that the exact amount that we had in the budget was actually a little higher than what the, what the chief had. We went and configured everything at budget time. It's eighteen thousand seven hundred thirty-four dollars, which is there's just a couple of thousand dollars difference, but uh, it is in the budget and it's more than adequate to do what the uh, chief wants to do. Other comments? All right. Vote your preference when your name is called, please. Hubbard. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Passed seven to zero. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, 3.6, uh, discuss how to <coughs> take action on the annual uh, contract with the Regional Transportation Authority, which provides the two buses that go to Nashville every morning and make the return run in the afternoons. Uh, that contract uh, from July 1st of this year through June 30th of the next year uh, reflect, reflects our share at $30,613. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. That was in the budget. It is in the budget. It's in our budget. We're just formally approving. Is there any discussion? Discussion is mass trans transportation within that metropolitan regional deal, so we may as well stay on board. All right, if there's nothing further, we'll call it. Oh, Paul, it looks like that uh, they're projecting our part will be 65,000 next fiscal year, is that right? Did you see that? That's not in the contract, that's in their budget. Well, they of course went up this year from uh, substantially, uh, they had had a federal grant in there earlier, the reason it was so low previously, yeah. But I, that might be the case uh, next year if well, there's no more federal money yeah. uh, in it, or not enough federal money. Actually, I thought that it would be a lot higher this year. It came in at uh, 30000 or half of whatever the subsidy has to be. Of course, this is a year-to-year. So you're, if you don't want to fund it next year, then you can. Yeah. Is there a possibility that they could get another grant? Or is that, are they out? You know? uh, I'd have to ask them. I, I know they try to do that. They are on board for everything that they can get uh, in that. I, I do know that, but I don't know beyond this year. All right, you have a proposal to approve what is in the budget. Uh, this contract you've, uh, we've alluded to is probably $30,613, I believe it says for this year. Please call the roll. Mason. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Head. Yes. Snyder, aye, past seven to zero. All right, we have now four parade applications. Uh, the first one's for the Chamber of Commerce to hold an art walk on August the 21st, 4.30 to 9 p.m. This blocks off Main Street from 5th to 7th. Then uh, the second request, Springfield High's annual Springfield High Homecoming Parade, September the 12th, 4 to 4.30 p.m. from 10th and Main to the middle school and uh, requesting that a portion of 10th Avenue be, be blocked off for the assembly of that to parade. Then the third one is I could have been adopted organization request to hold their quote whiskers and paws 5k run and walk for the cause. September 13th from 8.30 to 9 a.m. starts at the middle school and then on to the Greenway ending at Travis Price Park and number four the His Historical Society and Museum uh, to host their annual Historical Society picnic on September 29th from uh, <coughs> noon until 10 p.m. requesting to block off 6th Avenue uh, in front of the museum. Is there a request that these be, uh, is there a motion these four be approved? So Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Is there a second? A consolidated effort. 
Was it? Yeah, I did them all. Okay. I read them all. Yes. Alderman Ellis. Mr. Ellis made the motions. Second. 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 Okay. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Passed seven to zero. All right. Now we move to 3.8. This is uh, to discuss and possibly act on a final offer to settle the amount to be received from the bond for the legacy section 5B. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Paul, you recommend this? <coughs> uh, I do, and you also have a recommendation from, I know Alan recommends it, and Mr. Balthrop rep, uh, recommends it. You have a letter from Mr. Balthrop. Uh, just seems we're so close, might as well uh, take it and not bring it to court or? Okay. We went to court, it cost more than the difference. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have a motion? Yes, sir. Second? Yes, sir. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Head. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Pass 7-0. 3.9. Discuss and possibly act on amending task orders 3B, 4, 5, and 6 in the contract for engineering services for the sewer collection uh, systems rehab uh, from our partner, from our uh, engineering services uh, provided by Gresham, Smith, and partners. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Any discussion at Paul? Mayor, we're really not uh, increasing the cost of anything with this uh, change order. We're simply reallocating the money much as we would do within our own budget. So uh, some things are going to cost a little more than we anticipated. Some are going to cost a little less. So that's all we're doing on these particular okay. task orders. Questions? Call the roll, please. Ellis. Hi. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Mason. Aye. Head. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Okay. Now we move to 3.10. This uh, is somewhat similar. Uh, this is amend adding amendment one to task order 3A, Congressional Smith for engineering services. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There is a second. Any second. discussion? Please call the roll. Carneal. Aye. Head. Yes. Sneed. Aye. Mason. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Pass 7 to 0. Now, similarly, on 311, this is task all order 8 in this series of tasks. Uh, is there a motion and a second on that? So moved. Second. Discussion now. Hearing none, call the roll. Hubbard. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Pass 7 to 0. Now, 3.12 is task order 9 uh, in this series. Motion? So moved. Move. Okay. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Mason. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Head. Yes. Snyder. Aye. Pass 7 to 0. Now, 3.13 uh, covers task order number two. Uh, I need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Pass 7 to 0. All right, now 3.14 puts our chief of police up again. Uh, Mr. Thompson, what uh, do you have here? Uh, this is, as much as anything, it's an FYI uh, to brief the elected officials on some of the things that we're doing relative to our emergency communications. Uh, this applies to police and fire and EMS throughout this area. And I'm just going to give you a couple of highlights from that as far as what changes, what we're anticipating, and some timelines, and then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, our current radio system is what's called an analog radio, radio system. In terms of technology, it's, it's becoming obsolete technology. Uh, analog systems do not reach as well. They do not have as good a coverage and that sort of thing. 
Uh, the, the rest of the world is going to digital just like we are with our phones and the same way we are with our data plans. We're going to digital technology and our radios are also going to have to be changed out and our emergency communication system is going to have to become a digital system. There are several major reasons for this, the first of which is officer safety. I know that especially with the county, when you get outside of Springfield, there are numerous places all over Robertson County there are dead spots where you cannot reach with a portable radio or a mobile radio. And when the sheriff's office can't reach, that's a real problem. They've set up a digital system to see what difference it would make as much better coverage. It eliminates those dead spots. So it would allow uh, a great, uh, much higher level of safety, especially for the sheriff's offices, EMS, fire, and for that matter, Springfield officers when they're outside of our city. Uh, the second major factor is interoperability because virtually everyone in this Homeland Security District, District 7, has already made a commitment to go to digital technology and go to digital systems. We are the last that will be moving in that direction. Uh, if we don't do that, we have no radio communication with the other police department, sheriff's offices, and the other emergency services throughout this region because they're going to be on digital systems. We cannot interact with them with our analog radios. So that's the second major uh, motivation, if you will. The third is that the FCC has made it clear that they, and they expect everyone to move to digital technology. It's a matter of time before they mandate that. Uh, it's already been hinted about that they're going to be mandating it, but they haven't given us a deadline yet. So we know that it's coming. We know we're going to have to do it. And also, the next point is that the life cycle of our existing radios we do not have a bunch of great new radios that we're going to be ditching to go to a digital system. What we actually have is a lot of radios that are already beyond their life expectancies. Uh, most of our radios in the fire department and the police department were bought in 2006. The warranties on those do not extend beyond five years. Uh, at eight years, where we are now, uh, we are well beyond the expectancies of what those radios should be. So we're not proposing we're going to ditch a bunch of good radios so we can buy some new stuff. We're going to have to replace these radios. They're breaking right now. The antennas are breaking. We're having problems with the equipment. The repeaters have to be replaced. All of those things are coming anyway. The only question is do we upgrade to a digital system or do we try to tread water with, with old technology? And then uh, I want to make a, a comment in terms of funding on this. The police department is fortunate to have something called drug forfeiture money, contraband forfeiture money that we can utilize for buying police radios. It's very restrictive funding. You can't use it for a lot of different things. I can't use it to lower our tax rate. I can't use it to run out here and, uh, and pay salaries or buy gasoline for cars. I cannot use it for those things. But we can use it for one-time purchases improving technologies. So we will be able to purchase what we anticipate to the tune of about $50,000 of police radios. We'll be able to do that without touching any general fund money or any, any of your regular tax base money. That's all contraband forfeiture money. Now, the fire department does not have that. They don't have that advantage like we do, uh, but we do have that. Now, just to bring you up to date, the 911 board met this morning. Uh, it is anticipated that the entire communication system, emergency communication system here, is going digital. The only question is, are we going to partner with Greer Communications, or are we going to buy our own equipment and equip it ourselves? There are a lot of good reasons to enter into a public-private partnership with Greer Communications. That is currently in the works. Contracts are being negotiated. Discussions taking place. Nothing's been finalized on that. Uh, we expect that the homework will be done and we'll be ready to take some sort of action as a 911 board at the September meeting, but that's a month away from now. So that kind of brings you up to speed on where we are and what we're anticipating, but we are looking at, uh, uh, we're kind of playing with January 1 as an effective date to say on January 1 we want to be able to switch over and put all of our emergency communications on digital technology at that point. And I can come back and report updates to you and let you know how that's progressing as, as time goes. That sounds good. Are there any questions of the Chief? Thank you, David. Paul. Mayor, I did want to make the point, and, and David uh, mentioned it, there is no funding for the fire department. If you wanted to include them in a note uh, and, and amend the budget later in the year, really when police uh, transitions, fire needs transition, everyone's going over at the same time. 
So just something to keep in mind. Okay. Item 3.15 to discuss and possibly act on a request from Mr. Denver Krantz to remove a lien placed on property located at 1819 Park Street. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, this has been before. Uh, Paul, you want to speak on it? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. Uh, as you know, I think it was last month, maybe the month before, I can't remember. Uh, we asked the board to consider uh, a policy whereby we would uh, forgive liens if we could get some redevelopment in, in neighborhoods. And uh, staff recommendation was and uh, board voted that uh, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen would make those decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. And so this is the first uh, request that's come before us. I don't know if you've had a chance to go out and uh, look at uh, 20th and Park Street. Uh, Mr. Krantz has built a couple of new homes. Uh, Mr. Krantz has got a, a plan, uh, <coughs> a, 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 I guess a plat that he is developing right now. Uh, he would like to uh, uh, get, uh, reduce a lien of over fifteen thousand dollars, in uh, you know, so that you could get the full story behind this. Mr. Krantz's brother originally owned the houses on that street that got demolished, uh, and Mr. Krantz, uh, Denver Krantz, has uh, acquired those properties through the bank. Uh, and he, he plans to put, as you can see, very nice houses there. You've got pictures of, uh, two pictures of one house, and uh, then you have the picture of the other house on Park Street. So you can see uh, it's going to be a, a major redevelopment effort uh, for, that, for that neighborhood. Um, you also have uh, listed there, I think we should have, should have a breakdown of uh, the actual lien. Of course, we charge equipment and labor, which is most of the lien. The demolition costs are a little under $3,000. But for this one particular lot, and I think maybe uh, Mark or Mr. Krantz can explain this, but uh, he's going to have to uh, take this lot and then he's going to augment the property lines, replat, so that I think he can make three lots uh, where property exists right now so and he's going to have to accommodate some drainage so if he could if he could get this property uh, have this lien forgiven uh, he has stated that he would uh, build a house of uh, is it like 1100 square feet 1150 1150 and as you can see he's building some houses with a little style and a little character they look great and uh, is he here Yes, Mr. Krantz is in, in, in the back. Oh, good and, job. Your efforts. Good job. And so uh, I think uh, staff would, would recommend that uh, under the condition that he get an approved plat through the city and that he indeed gets a building permit for each of those houses at least 11, <coughs> 1,150 square feet All right. for each That's house. That's the recommendation, and, and that that lien of 15,000 whatever be uh, removed. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Is there a motion? So moved. A second. Second. Any discussion? Yes, yes Mr. Mayor. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Make your motion. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. As I'm trying to look at the plat here, Mr. Nunning, can you see what we're looking at right here? Is it the 55 right there is here on Park Street? Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Fields can explain. Yeah, I believe that is correct. I think Mr. Fields could probably explain this better than I can. Mark Fields, though. Planning codes to explain this. Mark, is it the 55 right there, that one lot right here? Yes, this is uh, 55, is, is one that's parcel. The house, that's the house. And what he's wanting to do, that's a 90 foot wide lot, and what he's proposing to do is shave 20 feet off of that, and we'll have, and then this lot here is 50 feet, whoops, and 50 foot, and we'll have three. 70 feet wide lot. Could you uh, speak into the mic there, uh, Mark, right, please, so that they can all hear that? What we're proposing is uh, if we remove the lean off a of lot 56, that's a 90 foot wide lot. Adjacent to it is a 50 foot lot, and he is going to take 20 feet off of uh, 55 and 56, add it to 57, and we'll have three 70 foot wide lots there. And then he's going to build two brand new homes on 57 and 56. 
there is currently a house, a, the brick house with the red roof, uh, green roof on uh, 55 that he already owns. And that's the proposal. All right. Mr. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mayor, yeah. I've got a question for Mr. Nutting. Is this setting a precedence for not going through and having tax lien sale and recuperating our funds? Well, yeah, because you're not going to be able to get that much money for the property. I and mean, that's the reason why we wanted the board to look at this on a case by case basis. Um, you can take, take action. Once this goes to a tax sale, you're not going to be able to forgive a lien. So right now, it's my understanding this has not been presented to, for a tax sale. May I come in, Mr. Smith? Yes. Uh, if you recall how shabby and how terrible that area looked and how this gentleman has improved it, I mean, he's definitely enhanced it. So I would consider giving him a break. Other comments? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I mean, we're. Mm -hmm. we're we're giving away a, quite a bit of money here where you're denying a public auction where other people may want to bid on this as well. And then the idea is to divide the lots into smaller lots, which is not something that I would, would like to see. I think they need to stay as wide as possible, not make it more dense in that area. Uh, just have a problem with setting a precedence doing this. Well, of course, you've got, uh, you, you weigh the argument. Uh, you're getting two 1150 foot each uh, square foot houses there, which will go on the tax rolls exactly. at a considerable improvement over what preceded it there. Exactly. Right. So I'm that's, the, that's the, the other side. And it is, it, there, it's fair to argue either way. Uh, well, what did you have, Mark? The, we're actually making the lots bigger. Actually, 50, uh, 57, parcel 57, has a storm drain running through it. And so we have to have an easement there of 10 feet. That makes that lot unbuildable. There'll never be a lot, a house built there on 57. Uh, and what he's proposing to do is shave off some of uh, uh, the lot 56 that has the lean on it is 70 feet now. What he's wanting to do is just take 20 feet and put it on to 57, which makes that 70 foot. He's going to shave off a parcel that he already owns, which is 55, take 20 feet off of that and give it to back to 56, and it stays 70 feet. So we're making the lots bigger. We're not reducing any of this, the lots except the one he already owns. And they'll all be uh, kind of more symmetrical right. and looks more like. But there'll be three houses where right now there will be, there was two. I mean, there's no more than two could be built as it is now. Actually, we, we removed four houses. <laughs> we actually removed four. There were four houses. There was one on 56, one on 57, and two houses on 58. And through the slum clearance, we removed all that. So where four were, three will be if this is approved. Yes, sir. The brick that is now there and the two that he's. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're Ms. spreading Nider. we're spreading out things and making them uh, clean That's and good. safe. Right. Miss Nader. I understand what Mr. Sneed is uh, saying because he's afraid that we are going to get less money for this property, but I don't believe this property, if it went to auction, would sell because of that lien of that that we have on it. So I think we're going to come out better in the long run by doing this. Paul? Yeah, the idea is we're clearing so much property that right. that won't be able to be used. And then we'll have to continuously maintain it. It's better over the long haul to get it yeah. back on the tax roll. Somebody wants to widen their property, they've got an empty lot next to them. Or someone wants, like Mr. Krantz wants to do, is really have a development. You don't want several people. You may not get this result if somebody else is in the middle of this property, right. and you may not get the houses that look the quality that he's building. So in in this particular case, I think it's probably a pretty good deal. Now, I wouldn't say that every, we'll, no. we'll argue this in every case that comes up, 
but that's why we did want to look at it a case by case basis. Well, He's made a very good faith effort to to really make an improvement right next to the housing authority, where we really need to improve. Exactly. That is an area where we've had so many problems, and it's good to see that somebody would be willing to commit this kind of funds to it. I, I know still there there are two sides, and I respect both sides of it. Other comments now. All right, we're going to call for the roll. Ellis. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. No. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Mason. Aye. Head. Yes. Pass six to one. All right, 316 is our monthly report from Mr. Uh, head of Water and Wastewater, Mr. Roger Lee. <coughs> I didn't make copies because I think it electronically was already here. Right. Yes. Well, if you want to see if there are any questions then. I have to take any questions. Is there anything that you needed to ask as we as this is uh, generally speak, could you give us just a brief summary of how things are proceeding, Roger? We are wrapping up contract 1A. That is the very first contract that was started by in situ form. It addressed the sewers in the area of the manhole over on uh, Circle Drive and Linda Lane. That was the one that if we had to, that's the one I picked out as, as the worst one, and that's where the contract, the very first contract. They uh, did a walkthrough inspection uh, several days ago. They were, I think, they were very pleased with it. So we should be wrapping that contract up uh, in the not too distant future. Tomorrow they have a walkthrough and final inspection on contract 1B. That is the, the contract that address the second what I, call, what I might consider the second worst overflowing manhole the one over on Old Greenbrier Pike where Warchers Creek crosses under. There are two drainage basins going to there. One of them is Basin 13 that's Stonegate and, and the area over there. The other is uh, Legacy Oakland Farms and, and uh, Saddlebrook. That contract is in the final stage. This should be wrapped up in, in a month or so also. Uh, the, you, you passed uh, task order eight. That is the task order that will allow Gresham Smith and Partners to do the, what we're in the bidding process now for contract 2A. This is uh, subbasins three and four A. That's over around uh, uh, Central Avenue and, and those areas back over in there. We're gonna take bids on that on September nine or 10. Hopefully we'll be able to bring it to y'all in September business meeting to award that contract. So task order eight is, is the bidding process as well as the contract administration and the, the on-site inspections for contract 2A. <coughs> task order nine is for them to draw up the plans and specifications for contract 2B. That's subvention 4B, which is up above 4A. It's on the South Main Street and that area. And five is over around uh, Third Avenue, Fourth Avenue, on the south side of Main Street. So we are we are keeping on track with the with, with the original intent of. I mean, we're almost two years into this CPA order, and uh, I'm very confident that we will be able to get it finished by the time uh, by three years from now. Excellent report. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, 3.17, discuss and possibly take action on establishing a twilight play program for the golf course. Paul, do you want to say something about that before we... <coughs> Well, thank you, Mayor. The, um, as you know, when we had our discussion back in, in the wintertime about uh, the rates, that uh, we looked at some data, and I think we're trying to be, do a better job of establishing rates because we understand who's playing and uh, how we can in, uh, improve play at different times of the day and who our market is at, at particular times. I think everybody realizes we need to pay people that live at the legacy and the people that live in the city. We need area seniors to play and we need people to come in from uh, uh, distances to come in and use the rack rate on Friday, Saturday and Sunday mornings where we get the most uh, uh, most revenue in, uh, making those tee times available for them. In trying to look at the rates, uh, Casper, nowadays with all the information that goes out, all the emails and things that go out and all the credit card information, they have a pretty good idea of uh, who responds to the emails, uh, when people tend to play and not to play, and who's playing at what particular time. 
and uh, they had a war room session that uh, Gina and I were participated in uh, a week before last. And they suggested that one thing that they think would be helpful, at least to try it until the end of the year, is to establish uh, a twilight category. And this might get more people who are re actually living on the course or right in town here that uh, give them uh, a, a decent rate uh, that would encourage them to play in the afternoon so we could free the mornings up for people who are coming from farther distances and want to play in the morning and then, you know, uh, finish up with their golf and move on with the rest of their day. So uh, the suggestion was that uh, it be, uh, you pay a flat fee of $69 per month and that every time you play that you would get uh, one large bucket of balls, courtesy bucket of balls. Uh, so once you paid your $69, you could play as much as you wanted for that month, but you'd have to pay the cart fee. Standard cart fee for 18 holes is $15, $10 for personal carts. And this is for 18 holes only. So if you start and you've got a quick round of golf and you want to play some more golf, then you have to pay another cart fee. And uh, I think this, this might be helpful. And then Mr. Sneed uh, asked me uh, some time ago and I've tried to put some information together. and. Some of this we've talked about uh, last year, but let me just, he asked a very specific question and I want to make sure that I answer that. we we'll pass that down there. You remember seeing the spreadsheet from uh, the winter time as we discussed the rates. And I added the uh, fiscal year 14 numbers in there. Now the one thing you have to remember, I think Mr. Sneed's question was, how have we been doing since we in implemented the new rates? And actually, the new rates haven't been in except for the first half in April, because what happened was, of course, you're in winter rates that you set every year because you want to get people to go out and play uh, when the weather isn't isn't that great. But in March and uh, late February, early March, and really for most of March, we had some bad weather. We had a lot of uh, ice and snow in March, and we also had winter kill on the grass. That's this year's crisis at the golf course. It's always always something. So, in fact, uh, the matter is that we really haven't been in under the new rates fully, uh, because also because the people that we made the one-year membership deals with, we honored those until they played out. So I think all of those, Josh, have finally worked their way through the system. Now, to get kind of an apples to apples uh, in answering Mr. Sneed's question, what I asked uh, Josh to do is get, uh, let's just get the whole month of April, even though this year we didn't have the rates in for the whole month, but take 2013's April on uh, numbers, 2013's May numbers, 2013's June numbers, 2014, or 2013's July numbers, and compare them to the four months in uh, 2014. Uh, and it's important that you, you, we've got some weather information and rain days and certain things in there. So I'm not sure, uh, with the weather and everything, it's, everything's shaking out uh, as we hoped it would. But uh, the fact is, I think we're seeing good results with the rates that we have. But I think we need to tweak the rates a little more and get some more play from some other uh, people out there that uh, uh, might be encouraged to play in the afternoons where we have our lowest uh, round play. So, uh, so you're making that recommendation? I would speaker. make that recommendation, but I want to say a couple of things too. We, um, we have to set this by ordinance, and I was thinking about this today, and uh, so I did prepare an ordinance, <laughs> but it has to have a couple, uh, three, two more readings. But under the circumstances, as you know, because of the weather, the course conditions, we've had to sprig, which mean, meant at the end of July, first part of August, we had to go cart path only which means a lot of our seniors can't do cart path, most of them. They have, to get, they have to be able to get right on the course to get to the ball. So our revenue has been impacted by that. And I would like to consider, if, if you would agree to do that by ordinance on first reading, that you would authorize us to at least try this for five months. We'll continue with the ordinance process and get this implemented. And I also added something else that I Think might be uh, might be helpful. Let me let me hand these out because it's not in your in your packet because I did this ordinance this afternoon. 
um, and we've done this before in other in other ordinances and I'm pretty sure at one point we passed an ordinance that gave the city manager an opportunity to uh, time to time approve specials you know sometimes people don't play because it was supposed to rain that day and then it turns out to be beautiful and you've got to get people onto that golf course by sending out emails and giving them a rate and encouraging them to play so in addition to the twilight play program i've simply put it a discounted fee policy which we probably need to look at every time we pass a change in the rates but it says the city manager shall be authorized from time to time to discount the fee schedule in order to market the golf course or to encourage play when demand is low such discounts shall not be granted to individuals, but must be made available to all members of the public or all members of the public who fall within the fee schedule categories for which the fees have been discounted. Each month, the city manager shall report to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen any discounted fees that were placed into effect, the amount of the discount, the purpose for which the discount was enacted, and the outcome achieved. This, we don't really want to disrupt our rates. We want to really see where we're going with the rates. We need to establish a base. And then we'll know what to do in the wintertime when it's time to review the rates. But in those circumstances where, you know, we, we had a, a good weekend and then people didn't play because they thought it was going to rain and didn't come in for their tea times, we want to be able to say, okay, just send out an email today. We'll give them this rate and let's see if we can get people on the course. So the intent is I don't want to undermine the existing rates or the uh, existing fee schedules, but there are times that we need people on this course, and we've got to do what we have to do to get them there. All right. You have a proposed ordinance 14-21 of the first reading, but lots of you read this pretty you have to be added to it. Well, let's vote on the adding it to the agenda. If you would favor, is there a motion this be added to the agenda? So no. Second. 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 I don't hear a second. Second. Public, public second. Oh, yes. excuse me. All right. Okay. If you would favor it, be, is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, go ahead. On the second page, mm -hmm. Exhibit A. Yeah. The second line, the fee for player $69 a month. Should that not be per game? Well, what, what will happen is you're going to be, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, I, maybe I missed your last point. What, what did you say? Exhibit A, line two. Okay. You're saying $69 a month. Yes. What, what they're paying is, they're kind of the kind of the greens fee is in there. You're going to pay a cart fee every time you play, and then that's going to cover your green fees. Okay. And so the we're bucket voting of balls. to add it to the agenda. Is anything further on that? we vote we're voting to, if you want to add it vote aye if you don't vote no Follow up. Mason aye. Ellis aye. Snead aye. Carneal aye. Hubbard aye. Head yes Snyder aye. Aye. seven to zero okay now we voted to put down the agenda now I'm entertaining a motion that we uh, move forward with it so move Second. okay Ordinance 14-21 is before you. You've heard the purpose of it. Any discussion? Yes, you have to read. Ordinance 14-21, an ordinance amending ordinance 14-02, establishing the schedule of fees and charges for play at the Legacy Golf Course by adding an additional fee category as set forth in Exhibit A. Whereas Article 4, Section 13 of the Charter of the City of Springfield requires that fixing of fees and charges can be accomplished through legislative action, which must be exercised by ordinance. And whereas the schedule of fees and charges for play at the Legacy Golf Course was approved by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen through adoption of Ordinance 14-02. And whereas the Board of Mayor and Aldermen desires to amend the schedule of fees for the Legacy <coughs> Golf Course at the recommendation of Billy Casper Golf Management. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Alderman of Springfield, Tennessee, as follows. Section 1. The schedule of fees for play at the Legacy Golf Course is hereby amended by amending Ordinance 14-02 by adding an additional fee category as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2. This ordinance and the fee category for the Legacy Golf Course 
set forth in Exhibit A attached shall become effective immediately upon final passage. Section 3, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies in conflict herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. All right. Now we have a motion and yes. a second that yes. this be. Is there any discussion? Call the roll. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Snead. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Mason. Aye. Pass 7 to 0. All right. Now let's do it this way. This. Let's do the consent portion next and then we're going to take a break and then come back and do the, all of this first. You want the students yeah. you want break? Beg pardon. You the well, let's do the consent one. Yes. And then I will have the break so they can not have to stay for the rest of that stuff. You would, would anybody want to make a motion on the consent agenda? Move, move for the total consent agenda. Is there a second? second. The, all right. You favor the consent ag agenda. So I, when your name is called, if you oppose, vote no. Mr. Mayor, may I yes. interrupt? Did we did we just vote on the on adding an item to the agenda? We no, voted. we voted twice. Okay. Voted to add it, and then we voted to approve. Okay. We did a problem. Did we? The last time? We did a problem. Yeah. Yeah. You voted to add the agenda. You had to. Yeah, we've had two votes on it. Yes, Have we, we not? We did. Yes, we did. Put it on. All right. Now that's it. No, that's it. That's it. That's it. Now we're ready for the consent agenda. Yeah, we're ready to vote on the consent agenda. In favor, vote aye. If you oppose, vote no. Head. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Ellis. Aye. Snead. Aye. Pass seven to zero. All right. Now we will take a, about a five minute break and then we'll come back and do items 2.1 through 2.8. Let me have <laughs> Now, if you will turn in on your in your agenda to back to the first page, and we will cover items 2.1 through 2.8, all of which are first readings, which require that the proposal be read. Of course, these will be considered two more times. Uh, I don't think you're probably going to want to discuss these in any length through the hour, but we'll have them and we'll have to move them forward if it is your desire. So we're ready now for uh, the first one, Ordinance 14-13. Uh, someone want to, want to make a motion? So moved. And Back. a second? Back. Now, Ms. Connie, if you'll read that. Mr. <laughs> ordinance 14-13, an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2014 annual budget for the city of Springfield by amending certain general fund budgets. Whereas it is necessary to amend the City of Springfield annual budget for fiscal year 2014 in order to meet the requirements of the City Charter. Now therefore, be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee, that the City of Springfield annual budget for fiscal year 2014 is hereby amended to make necessary changes to expenditures within the General Fund Departments as set forth in Exhibit A attached. All ordinances, resolutions, and policies policies in conflict herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. Uh, I have some comments, but but uh, we'll wait till everybody gets back on okay. this particular one. <laughs> I can't find the alderman. <laughs> I can probably cut his check. All right. We ready now to consider action yes. on this. Yes, sir. All right. We have a motion and Move a second. Move for approval. Oh. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Paul? Mayor, this is just one uh, detail, minor detail that we have to work out in the uh, I overestimated the amount of expenditures we'd have in the I overestimated the amount of expenditures we have in the golf course this year. Um, we're always about 20 or 25 days behind on the information we get from the golf course, and I thought I was managing that budget pretty tight, but we actually finished a little over budget, 
and so we're ten thousand three hundred ninety nine over but we were fifty thousand dollars approximately under budget in parks and recreation so i'm changing one two three four five six line items in uh, parks reducing that by uh, ten thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars and applying that ten thousand three ninety nine to golf course so that everything balances out all right you've heard the explanation you would favor the <coughs> approval of this ordinance vote aye if you oppose vote no ellis oh, excuse me hubbard aye sneed aye snyder aye carneal aye mason aye head yes past six to zero two point two covers ordinance 14-14 is there a motion so moved and a second Sorry. please read it miss connie ordinance 14-14 an ordinance rescinding ordinance 08-01 in its entirety and amending title 12 of the springfield municipal code by deleting chapter 1 entitled building codes in its entirety and substituting a new chapter 1 entitled building codes to read a set forth in exhibit a attached whereas the board of mayor and alderman desires to update the building codes of the city of springfield and whereas it is necessary to adopt a building code establishing the minimum regulations governing the conditions and maintenance of all property buildings and structures by providing the standards for supplied utilities and facilities and other physical things and conditions essential to ensure that structures are safe sanitary and fit for occupation and use the condemnation of building and structures unfit for human occupancy and use the demolition of such structures and whereas it is necessary to adopt a residential building code regulating the design construction quality of materials erection installation alteration repair location relocation replacement addition to use or maintenance of one and two family dwellings and townhouses not more than three stories in height and providing for the issuance of permits and collection of fees therefore now therefore be it ordained by the board of mayor and alderman of springfield tennessee as follows section one ordinance 08-01 is hereby rescinded in its entirety and chapter 12 of the springfield municipal code is hereby amended by deleting chapter one entitled building codes in its entirety and substituting a new chapter one entitled building codes to read a set forth in exhibit a attached section two all ordinances resolutions and policies in conflict herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only ordinance 14-14 has been read uh, aloud it has a motion and a second is there any discussion Paul mayor uh, I think uh, I can give you a little rundown of why we're doing this and why we got so many codes at the same time you may or may not know that the state of Tennessee establishes codes that are adopted and we have to be within so many years of the codes that they adopt so everything we're on to right now is 2006 mark yes, sir. so they're going to 20 2012 on most everything okay well on all these okay well right now what we're trying to do is just get everybody go right to the transition from the 2006 to the 2012 there are really no significant changes in the in the code and with the exception of the energy code that we're going to go with 2009 because we think the 2012 is too burdensome and in the state they're going to 2009 aren't they state of tennessee energy code So that, that's the reason for it. So all of these will change to the 2012 with the exception of the energy code, which will be 2009. Right now, everything is 2006. So what you're referring to is, is what's included on items 2.2 through 2.8. That's correct. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. It has been read. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Carneal. 
Aye. Head. Yes. Sneed. Aye. Mason. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Has six to zero. We move to item two point three, which is ordinance 14-15 15 on first reading. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Ms. Watson, will you read that, please? Ordinance 14-15, an ordinance rescinding ordinance 09-01 in its entirety and amending Title 12 of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Building, Utility, Etc. Codes by deleting Chapter 2 entitled Plumbing Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 2 to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached, whereas code officials recognize the need for a modern, up-to-date plumbing code addressing the design and installation of plumbing systems through required requirements emphasizing performance and whereas the international plumbing code is designed to meet these needs through model code regulations that safeguard the public health and safety in all communities large and small and whereas a comprehensive plumbing code establishes minimum regulations for plumbing using prescriptive and performance related provisions and whereas it is founded on broad based principles that make possible the use of new materials and new plumbing designs now therefore be it ordained by the board of mayor and aldermen of springfield tennessee as follows section one ordinance 09-01 is hereby rescinded in its entirety and title 12 of the springfield municipal code entitled building utility etc codes is hereby amended by deleting chapter two entitled plumbing code in its entirety and substituting a new chapter two to read a set forth in exhibit a attached section two all ordinances resolutions and policies in conflict herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only ordinance 14 dash 15 has been read aloud it has a motion and a second any discussion please call the roll hubbard aye snyder aye carneal aye sneed aye head yes mason aye. has six to zero we move to 2.4 this is ordinance 14 dash 16 is there a motion so, so moved. second all right Ms. watson if you read this Ordinance 14-16, an ordinance rescinding ordinance 09-03 in its entirety and amending Title 12 of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Building, Utility, Etc. Codes by deleting Chapter 4 of Entitled Mechanical Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 4 to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Whereas code officials recognize the need for a modern, up-to-date mechanical code addressing the design and installation of mechanical systems, emphasizing performance, and whereas the International Mechanical Code is designed to meet these needs through model code regulations that safeguard the public health and safety in all communities, large and small. And whereas this comprehensive mechanical code establishes minimum regulations for mechanical systems using prescriptive and performance related provisions and whereas it is founded on broad based principle that make possible the use of new materials and new mechanical system designs now therefore be it ordained by the board of mayor and aldermen of springfield tennessee as follows Section 1, Ordinance 09-03, is hereby rescinded in its entirety and Title 12 of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Building, Utility, Etc. Codes is hereby amended by deleting Chapter 4 entitled Mechanical Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 4 to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies in conflict herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. All right. <clears throat> Ordinance 14-16 has been read aloud. It has a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Mason. Aye. Ellis. Excuse me. Sneed. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Head. Yes. Snyder. Aye. <coughs> Pass six to zero. 2.5 is ordinance 14-17. For first reading, is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Watson, will you read it, please? Need a second. Oh, excuse me. Did I get a second? Second. Okay. Now will you read it, please? <laughs> ordinance 14-17, an ordinance rescinding ordinance 08-02 in its entirety and amending Chapter 12 of the Springfield Municipal Code by deleting Chapter 7 entitled Property Maintenance Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 7 entitled Property Maintenance Code to read a set forth in Exhibit A attached. Whereas the Board of Mayor and Aldermen desires to adopt a new property maintenance code of the City of Springfield. 
and whereas it is necessary to adopt a new property maintenance code regulating and governing the conditions and maintenance of all property, buildings, and structures by providing the standards for supply, utilities, and facilities, and other physical things and conditions essential to ensure that structures are safe, sanitary, and fit for occupation and use, and the condemnation of buildings and structures unfit for human occupancy and uses and the demolition of such existing structures within the city of Springfield and providing for the issuance of permits and collection of fees. Now therefore be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee as follows. Section 1, Ordinance 08-02 is hereby rescinded in its entirety and Title 12 of the Springfield Municipal Code is hereby amended by deleting Chapter 7 entitled Park Property Maintenance Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 7 entitled Property Maintenance Code to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies in conflict herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. All right, you've heard Ordinance 14-17 read aloud. You've made a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Snead. Aye. Head. Yes. Mason. Aye. Pass six to zero. 2.6 is ordin refers to Ordinance 14-18 on first reading. Is there a motion? So moved. Aye. I'll second. Ms. Watson, will you read this proposed ordinance? Okay, Ordinance 14-18. An ordinance rescinding Ordinance 12-02 in its entirety and amending Title 12 of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Building, Utility, etc. Codes by deleting Chapter 12 entitled Energy Conservation Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 12 to read it set forth in Exhibit A attached whereas code officials recognize the need for a modern, up-to-date energy conservation code addressing the design of energy-efficient building envelopes and installation of energy-efficient mechanical, lighting, and power systems through requirements emphasizing performance, and whereas the International Energy Conservation Code is designed to meet these needs through model code regulations that will result in optimal utilization of fossil fuel and non-depletable resources in all communities, large and small. And whereas this comprehensive energy conservation code establishes minimum regulations for energy efficient buildings, usually prescriptive and performance related provisions. And whereas it is founded on broad based principles that make possible the use of new materials and new energy efficient designs. Now therefore be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee as follows. Section one, ordinance 12-02 12, 12 is hereby rescinded in its entirety and Title 12 of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Building, Utility, Etc. Codes is hereby amended by deleting Chapter 12 entitled Energy Conservation Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 12 to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies in conflict here, herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. All right, you've heard uh, Ordinance 1418 read aloud. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. On the Energy Conservation Code, is this going to uh, be for, I guess, all new construction? Uh, you would try to get uh, building designs materials to do that. What, what about remodeling? If you had an older existing house, what is the uh, issue regarding uh, a remodel job. Mr. Mark Fields from the Codes Department will attempt to answer that. Right. The, uh, the Energy Code applies to uh, renovations, alterations to existing buildings. So if you go in and you renovate uh, your, the, your, your house and you replace the windows in your house, the code would require you to get code compliant windows. That is, that is the building code and the energy code go together. Uh, so I mean Simple it, repairs do not apply. In historic homes, there's exceptions to that. But basically, normally, when you do a renovation, addition, a renovation, they would go to uh, the new code, bring it up to the standard. Are there other questions? All right, please call the roll. Head. Yes. Carneal. Aye. Snyder. Aye. 
Mason. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Snood. Aye. Has six to zero. All right, we move now to page two. And ordinance 14-19, is there a motion? So, so moved. Second. Um, Ms. Watson will read that in its entirety, please. Ordinance 14-19, an ordinance rescinding ordinance 06-36 and 10-12 in their entirety and amending Title Seven of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Fire Protection and Fireworks by deleting Chapter 2 in Title Fire Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 2 to read a set forth in Exhibit A attached. Whereas it has become necessary for the City of Springfield to update, update its fire codes to be consistent with those adopted by the State of Tennessee. Now therefore be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee as follows. Section 1, Ordinance 06-36 and 10-12 are hereby rescinded in their entirety and Title 7 of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Fire Prevention and Fireworks is hereby amended by deleting Chapter 2 entitled Fire Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 2 to be set forth in, exhi in Exhibit A attached. Section 2, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies in conflict herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. Thank you. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Hubbard. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Carneal. Aye. Mason. Aye. Head. Yes. Ellis. Aye. Has 7 0. 2.8 uh, is to discuss and possibly act on Ordinance 14 20 <clears throat> on first reading. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right, Ms. Connie, if you'll read this. Ordinance 14-20, an ordinance rescinding Ordinance 09-02 in its, in its entirety and amending Title 19 of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Ele Electricity and Gas by deleting Chapter 3 entitled Gas Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 3 to read a set forth in Exhibit A attached. Whereas code officials recognize the need for modern up-to-date fuel gas code addressing the design and installation of fuel gas systems and gas-fired appliances through requirements emphasizing performance. And whereas the International Fuel Gas Code is designed to meet these needs through model code regulations that safeguard the public health and safety in all communities, large and small. Whereas this comprehensive fuel gas code establishes minimum regulations for fuel gas systems and gas-fired appliances using prescriptive and performance-related provisions and whereas it is founded on broad-based principles that make possible the use of new materials and new fuel gas system and appliance designs. Now therefore be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee as follows. Section 1, Ordinance 09-02 is hereby rescinded in its entirety and Title 19 of the Springfield Municipal Code entitled Electricity and Gas is hereby amended by deleting Chapter 3 entitled Gas Code in its entirety and substituting a new Chapter 3 to read a set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2, all ordinances, resolutions, and policies in conflict herewith are hereby rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. All right, so you've heard the reading of Ordinance uh, 1420. We uh, have moved and seconded this uh, item. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Carneal? Aye. Head? Yes. Sneed? Aye. Mason? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Ellis? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Pass 7 to 0. All right, that concludes our agenda with the exception of the city manager's report. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want to announce that I'll be on vacation starting tomorrow morning, and I'll be back uh, Thursday, September this meeting, 4th. This meeting wore you out. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm more than ready for a vacation. This is, this is good. So, of course, uh, Miss Gina will be in charge in my absence. Uh, also, I did want to let you know that we've been uh, interviewing for the finance director city recorder position. Uh, David Crane, I've appointed him acting uh, finance director and city recorder, and Dave's doing a good job. Uh, we're still going to try a few more interviews if we can. Uh, we have interviewed five people for the director of planning uh, position, and we know that uh, we've advised everybody that will not be uh, filled until after October 1st. 
Uh, also, uh, we've got RFPs out for the golf course. Uh, we've got talked to 10 different companies, including Billy Cash for Golf. So we've already had a few companies come in to take a look at uh, the golf course. So uh, we'll be getting the RFPs September 10th and reviewing those and then possibly reducing the, uh, the number to a, a, a number of the interview. Uh, just forgot, I forgot to put the quarterly reports out. I'll do that tonight before I leave. I'll send them to you electronically and give you a paper copy as well. Also, we received a petition uh, from the uh, folks who live on Old Greenbrier Pike uh, asking to reduce the speed limit there, uh, especially people have to back out on Old Greenbrier Pike. Uh, as you know, the standard city speed limit, if it's not posted otherwise, is 30 miles per hour. I think it's 40 out there. And so the traffic committee will review that and come back uh, and make a recommendation to the board at the uh, at the September meeting. Also, uh, we have a uh, company that is going to relocate into the uh, North Industrial Park. Things are going well. We anticipate that uh, this will come to uh, fruition. Uh, there has been an issue. They wanted fiber extended out there. Uh, they've approached Comcast about that. Uh, Comcast has not been resolving this issue on the pole attachment agreement and they've been stating that well because we we had, they haven't resolved anything with the city that they couldn't can't put anything on poles uh, so I think there are other options for the company and people in the North Industrial Park but uh, just wanted to say that this this Comcast issue goes on and on and uh, ask Robert to talk to the attorney and see if we just need to get these people in the court but I did want to advise you of that. And I think it's just, a, it's really important to get fiber out in the North Industrial Park, no matter what we have to do, even if we have to work something out with Comcast in the interim. Uh, but I think it's important for everybody out there. Well said. Is there anything further? I do want to recognize Mr. Tony Feltz, Director of Parks and Rec, for the great job that he's done. <laughs> In his dual role as director of Parks and Rec and also as coach, uh, I think he's kind of talked a little bit about a signing bonus for next year, so y'all may imagine. Uh, uh, he's saying no, but that's the word I've heard, so we'll uh, take that up later. Is there anything further? We stand adjourned.